game night in the only pro hockey league in this country for women. Tonight, in the Canadian Women's Hockey League, it's the Toronto Furies hosting the Calgary Inferno. For almost a decade, this league has been the place to play for the best in women's hockey. On the ice tonight... And here comes Natalie Spooner. Natalie Spooner, gold medalist from the Sochi Olympics. It's Jenner digging after the pocket. Brianne Jenner, also on that Canadian gold medal team. Makes the pass over to Wickenheiser. And of course, Haley Wickenheiser, an Olympic champion four times over. Oh! And in the stands tonight, Sammy Jo Small, two-time Olympic champ. She'd be dressed and on the ice for the Furies if it weren't for this little girl, Kenzie. But her first baby, in a sense, was the CWHL. A bit of history. Seven years ago, Sammy Jo Small and a few other players created the CWHL out of a previous women's league that had collapsed. It was set up as a cooperative run by the players for the players, and that's still the way it works today. I didn't expect this to come about. I expected a league that we could play in for a year and maybe have some great ideas come out of it. But seven years on, this is bigger and better than I think I even probably imagined. The CWHL has five teams, Calgary, Brampton, Ontario, Toronto, Montreal, and Boston. All revenue is shared equally. No one team ever has more than another. From that revenue, coaches, general managers, and other staff are paid, and there's money for marketing and, of course, the ice. But the last, perhaps most important piece of the puzzle has yet to fall into place. 85% of the league um, has progressed to a point where I want it to be. Of course, we expect to be able to play the players at this point. That's right. The players don't get paid, at least not in this women's hockey league. Megan Bozek used to play on the Toronto Furies last year. She's an American, a member of the silver medal winning U.S. women's hockey team in Sochi. But this year, she's the one who struck a bit of gold. Now, three times a week, she travels from her home in Burlington, Ontario to Buffalo, New York for this. Meet the CWHL's freshly minted competition. That's right, a whole other league, the new National Women's Hockey League. It's just four teams, Buffalo, Boston, Stamford, Connecticut, and New York. Tonight, from the Harbor Center in downtown Buffalo, it's the Buffalo Buttes versus the Connecticut Whale. And check out the Maple Leaf on some of those jerseys. Canadian women are playing in this league as well. It's hit them hard, bold, fierce, and loud hockey. And get this, this league actually pays its players. We all dream of playing college hockey, of hopefully making it to the Olympics and wearing that USA jersey, but Another step to that is getting paid to play. The maximum salary in the NWHL is $25,000 a year. Being a national team member and an Olympian, Bozek is the top paid player on the Buttes and one of the highest in the league. It's not something that we can live off of or anything, but um, my goal is to train for the 2018 Olympics. And with that, with our training schedule and travel schedule, if I'm named to a U.S. roster. It doesn't really allow for us to have a full-time job. So a part-time salary like this helps me in my training, um, traveling for, for other events or for skating competitions. Oh, yeah. There's also a minimum salary for players, $10,000, and each team has an overall salary cap of $270,000. League-wide, that's more than a million dollars just for the players, plus coaches and staff, plus travel, hotels, and ice rentals. So, the big question is, how has the NWHL been able to achieve all in one year what the CWHL has been unable to do in seven? We have a, a few investors that we, we actually, we don't go on record talking about. Danny Ryland is the commissioner of the NWHL in Brooklyn, 
across the river from Manhattan, the new league is essentially run as a startup with a plan to sell franchises to buyers who want to put a team in their town. Timeline? Well, that's to be announced. I can say that all of our investors are passionate hockey fans. Rylan herself started playing hockey when she was five, in Florida, no less. And she had a college hockey career at Northeastern University in Boston before creating this, what she calls her dream job. Uh, you know, it started as an idea, a dream, and I have vetted it around my hockey network. And um, before I knew it, I had so much support behind me and so many people saying, Danny, this is a no-brainer. You've got to do it. And now here we are, you know, almost halfway through our, our inaugural season, and I, I'm still just in awe by the amount of support that we have. Lamoureux tries to cut in front, Duggan with a shot, scores! Ryland likes to point out that nearly five million Americans watched that gold medal women's hockey game from Sochi, but keep in mind that 13 million Canadians watched it. That's a lot of love for this game. People weren't watching it just because it was a women's game. They're watching it because it was an amazing hockey game and just to show how much the game has evolved over the last couple years is really what's making um, what's making it the right time in the right place and that's where we're at. Nowhere has the picture of women's hockey changed more with the arrival of the NWHL than the Boston area. Home now to not one but two women's pro hockey teams. The CWHL team plays in a suburb west of Boston, though it's not exactly a fan-friendly rink. The Blades have been the class of the CWHL, league champion two out of the last three years, but this year they've won just once. It's definitely been, it's been tough. Canadian Olympian Tara Watchhorn won a championship in her first year with the Blades last year. Then she watched as 13 players, more than half the team, left to play in the upstart NWHL. I had the privilege of playing with them last year for the first time on the same team. And to just be around that caliber and what they really brought to the team, obviously it's, it's hard to match. And this is where those players went to the Boston Pride with its much more fan-friendly rink at Harvard University, although it too is far from full tonight. Still, the talent in the Boston team might well be the best in U.S. women's hockey. Brianna Decker, Casey Bellamy, and Hillary Knight, to name a few. All U.S. Olympians and all played last year for the Blades back in the CWHL. In fact, Every player on the U.S. national team who played last year in the CWHL is now playing in the NWHL, and not by coincidence. They had a vote. It was all of them or none of them, and they all jumped to the new league. We had numerous talks about it, and we want to stick together as a program. We can see how each other are developing. And another, another thing is you have to look at our fan base. It's all, it's all young girls that aspire to be us one day. Um, so knowing that little girls are looking up to us, we want to be the start of what their dreams are hopefully going to be one day. And here's the thing. That dream is now set to get some major league exposure, literally. The National Hockey League has just announced that this season, women's hockey will be part of its annual Winter Classic, when NHL teams play each other outdoors. It's hugely popular, and this year features the Montreal Canadiens in Boston against the Bruins. But this time, the event will include an extra game with women's teams pitting the two competing women's leagues against each other. The hometown Boston pride of the NWHL versus Les Canadiens of Montreal. Talk about a showdown. It wasn't, let's have the best Americans versus the best Canadians. It was, how do we create an opportunity for the best women to play on the ice at Winter Classic? Susan Cohen is the Vice President of Marketing with the NHL. We're in a market that has an NWHL team as well as a CWHL team. We're, in, in a sense, agnostic when it comes to the two leagues. We don't really 
pick a, pick a league, we support the women's games. It's a tough situation, but I wouldn't be uh, a passionate hockey player or have a lot of belief in my team. And I can't, I can't lie to you and say that our team isn't hurt by the decision because we want to be out there just like everyone else. And I think it's an unfortunate situation that the CWHL was put in. Um, but at the same time, it's an exciting, it's an exciting opportunity for women's hockey. Now, if all of this is sounding just a little familiar to longtime pro hockey fans, recall the World Hockey Association. Back in the 1970s, the WHA was formed as a 12-team league that challenged the supremacy of the NHL, even stealing away its biggest star, Bobby Hull. But both leagues suffered, and the WHA didn't last. In the end, four teams from the WHA merged with the NHL. And say many, that's what has to happen here for the good of women's pro hockey. Well, I think if you're looking at having a professional sport, whatever the sport is, being able to have all the best players playing together certainly makes the most sense in order to have a compelling product on the ice. Even the players from both leagues say two is most definitely not better than one in this case. Do I think they will merge though? Yes. Do I know when? I do not. Um, but if you can merge two of the best leagues, arguably two of the best leagues in the world, um, I think it would be an even bigger push for women's hockey. I think right now it's, it's going to have to play out and um, they both have very different models and very different plans for the future. But I think in order for women's hockey to be successful, we need to have the best talent on the ice in one league. And yet, it's hard to argue that these are not good days of a kind for women's hockey. A second league has created opportunities for women whose hockey careers would have otherwise ended with university and college. And next year, the CWHL says it'll finally begin paying its players, though how much is uncertain. Meanwhile, these two leagues, these two business models will square off at the Winter Classic, the biggest showcase so far for professional women's hockey. Though the real question, which league will win the bigger battle? And if one of the leagues fails for whatever reason, whether or not people have information as to why it would fail, there might be that perception women's sports can't draw. And I don't believe that's the case.